Doc again. Hey, how is everybody's Tuesday going? I know mine is going, 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 gone. 9 p.m. EST right here, Channel Zero. Welcome to the show. My name is C-Doc, and you know what you're watching. C-Doc again. But I do not do this alone. No, of course not. I have my cohorts, co-conspirators, in whatever. Uh, first up is, uh, a gal that got her start in classic rap radio, our lady from the heyday of K-Day, Jennifer O'Jenny. What's up, what's up, what's up? Peace! Party people in the place to be? <laughs> Don't you know it. Don't you know it. That horse mm-hmm. is in the house. Yes, he is. What's up, bro? Yeah. Ah, uh, yep. So, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> oh, my God. You know, know who does a mean impression of the start of the show? Hmm. One Mr. Damage from Yag Fu Front, and oh, it does he? is ready. It, it you, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. I think. I think I can't wait to see it. Uh, yeah. Well, our, uh, we're not going to waste any time. Um, also joining us tonight, coming from New Jeru's. Uh, you follow him on Instagram, and if you don't, you better. Ladies and gentlemen, Ultra Mag 7. C-Doc. Jennifer. Yeah. What up? What's up, bro? How are you? I am good, and and salute to you on your your power cipher born day. Uh, sorry, I couldn't make the party, but I saw the pictures. Tell tell the hand, tell tell our A and R. I apologize. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good, man. It's all good. I was hoping you show up because we had a lot of food, so <laughs> I was hoping a lot of people I, would show up. I, I saw I saw a little performance too. <laughs> Amazing what a couple of shots will do, you know. I saw your I saw your rap hands. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you with your little you it looked like the Beastie Boys, what they used to do. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna steal, steal from the best. You know? Of course, of course. Yep. yep. Um Yeah. No, it was fun. Thank you, bro. It was fun. Yeah. I could have been there. So next time. Yeah. Um we, you know what? Flatline is on his way. He'll be here shortly. But we're going to bring our guest in because he is going to be going live on stage tonight. So let's wow. get the party rolling. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, He's so he's on tour. We'll ask him about it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, of Diggable Planets, uh, Craig Doodlebug Irving, a.k.a. C. Knowledge. Peace, Lord. There he is. It. Oh. Oh, he can't hear us. Oh no. Ah. Uh, may have to try this again. Yep. He's asking. We can't hear you. Can't hear me. Yep. Can't hear you, sir. Yeah. Nah, we can't hear you. Yeah. Might want to try. Might want to. Come back in or? Yeah, yeah, come back in. There we go. All right, we'll try it again. He's, he's, once he's more. Here. Psych! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I yeah. thought you were going to see Doodlebug, but. See him in the house. What's up, bro? Woohoo! Yo, yo. Yeah. Go, go. Bam. Yeah. Uh, I owe him something, too. <laughs> uh oh. Yes, it is, Knack. It's sound problems again. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out, Nack. <laughs> what the hell? What would it be without without that? Right, exactly. It's now a part of the charm. Technical difficulties. Let, let's try this again. Hey, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, yes, no. yes. Good. Good. Salute, Lord. What's up? Peace. Peace. How are you, sir? Good, good, man. I'm about to do a show in about an hour or so. 
yeah, we we're we're gonna get right to it and not, not you know not hold you up. So thank you for thank you for taking some time on the. On oh man, the thanks for having tonight. me. Thanks for having me. It's all good. I remember the last time we did this; it was mad fun. Yeah. So where where are you where are you guys performing tonight? Uh, Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. Wow. Oh. Word up. That's what's up. All right. So we can only assume snowing outside. Nah, it's actually it was like sixty degrees today. It was actually pretty, it was nice. I didn't have a coat on or anything outside. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. It's a little warmer than it is here on the East Coast. So. No oh God. Tell I'm me not, about it. I was just there a week ago. Is that is is this a one off show or are you guys on tour? We're on tour. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, how long's the tour running? Uh, we've been on the road for two weeks now. We got like another week. Okay. Don't. Mm -hmm. so any any highlights? Oh man, we did a um, Radio City Music Hall with um, the po the Black Pumas. Wow, that was dope. dope. It was sold out show. It was a lot of people there. It was it was real dope. Wow. And, uh, let me see what else. We had a lot of good shows. Chicago was hot. Chicago, they came out. It was real dope. Minneapolis, we did that uh, two nights ago. That was really nice too. Yeah. I, I, to be honest with you, every show had it in, had its own unique quality to it. You know what I'm saying? It made it dope and special. And the fact that all those people, after 30 years, still rocking with us, man, it just made every it made it special. Man. Yeah, that's great. That that's great. You love to see it, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah you love to see it. Um, so let's well, let's go back. Let's go back 30 years. Let's go back 30 plus years or whatever. Did you did you grow up in Philly? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I just West Oak Lane, Germantown area. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and when did you when did you first get into hip hop? What was the what what got you into hip hop? Oh uh, man, um, block parties, uh, Grandmasters of Funk. In my neighborhood, Grandmasters of Funk was the was the uh, was the crew. Every neighborhood had its own crew. Like that was the crew. My neighborhood it was uh, Cosmic Kev, Perry P. You yeah, know what I'm saying? those. It was them, them cats. You know what I'm saying? They was doing a thing, and um, also DJ Thorpe, he was pretty big up my way too, and oh, DJ Spinbad was also, he was also big time around my neighborhood too. But 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 GMF was the main ones. You know what I'm saying? They would always do these block parties around the corner from my block. I grew up on Forest Avenue, right off Upsell Street, and um, Rugby Street and Gilbert Street. They was always. Yo, it was mad lit on Rugby Street. Let me tell you. And <laughs> every summer, Rugby Street would have these block parties. And Grandmasters of Funk, MC Perry P, Cosmic Kev, and all those cats would come out there and they would do their thing. And I'm a young boy, so I'm like, I heard tapes before from friends coming from New York, bringing tapes down, and Lady B show was on. But my first actual presentation of it was through them. And I was standing wow. there, I was just standing, me and my friends were just standing there right in front of the DJ set and just watched them like, trying to figure out what what, rec <laughs> what records they was getting so we can go down to Funko Mart Records and go get it ourselves, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And that's really how I, I, I got into hip hop right there. From there on, I was just like, yo, I was hooked. I was like, yo, I got to do what they doing. I, I would follow behind them trying they they would always blank out the freaking record so you couldn't see what the break was you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they always the, the, the big djs did that you know what i'm saying and yep it was hard but i but eventually i thought you being there for a while and you just and, and, and your love of music i figured out some of the breaks you know what i'm saying and um yeah no oh no <laughs> no oh, come on <laughs> right in the middle of the story Oh it was, uh, no! Cosmic Kev. Oh, there we go. Oh, there. Y'all went out for a second. Yeah, we yeah. lost for a sec. Yep. All right. Yeah. So that's that was my that was the uh, the thing that really the that got me started on this journey in hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And from there, it was just all downhill. You know what I'm saying? I started hearing Lady B show. Started hearing about Run DMC and Cold Crush Brothers and. Uh, uh -huh. Grand Wizard Theodore and all that, you know what I'm saying? And then from there, it was just over. And then Philadelphia started catching on, and they started having big parties and big block parties on Belmont Plateau. Every neighborhood had its own <laughs> block parties. They would have joints at the Wagner's Ballroom and uh, like a lot of different places, you know what I'm saying? Had a lot of, was famous for having hip hop shows, you know what I'm saying? And that's how, you know what I'm saying? And that, in that circle, I met people like Jazzy Jeff, Will Smith, DJ Cash Money, Tap Money. You know what I'm saying? All these different cats, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. It's, I've just been wow. doing it ever since. Yeah. Can, can you, you just brought her up 
and uh, I mean, she she always gets love, but you know, I grew up obviously in the same era and area, kind of you know, in Jersey, listening to uh, Philly radio. Can you talk about the importance of Lady B? I think people don't don't understand how important she was to Philly hip hop and hip hop in general. Yeah, man, Lady B is the foundation really for most of us. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yes. Without her, without her, it would have just been like little mixtapes trickling down here and there from people who were lucky enough to go up to New York and tape one of the radio shows or be at one of the live sets and tape it with their uh their boom box or whatever. She was the that conduit between yeah. that New York underground scene and, and, and us. You know what I'm saying? She brought that mm-hmm. world to and it was dope. You know what I'm saying? I mean Lady B I mean, she even put out her own record. I can't remember the name. I think it was on the To the Beach Y'all or something like that. To the Beach Y'all. Yeah, yeah, To the Beach Y'all. Yeah, that was it. And, um, yeah. She put her own record out, and she was just like, she was the truth. You know what I'm saying? Everybody who was doing hip-hop yes. stuff here, you had, if you wasn't on Lady B show, you was trying to get on Lady <laughs> B show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That Lady B was is everything. I call her the queen and king of Philly hip-hop. And uh, I actually think... I really think she was the first uh, female to put out a record, like you know, like a solo female. I mean, I we had to know, check I can't that, but that, but that, it, it, yeah, she was one of the, it, was early, it was early in the game, so it could have been yeah, very game. early, very early. But yeah, respect to Lady B. Yeah, and I also kind of gives respects to um, WKDU. They was a very important oh. part of the hip hop scene back in the days. You know what I'm saying? Drexel University had their own radio station. And WKDU had all the ill <laughs> hip hop shows, man. That was the, that was one of the most outside of Lady B. That was one of the more popular hip hop shows, right there. WKDU. Yeah. See, what's so crazy is I used to listen to ninety one point seven WKDU, and yeah. year, years later I went to Drexel. And I guess when I was a kid, I wasn't realizing it was Drexel Radio. Then I went down. I'm like, oh, this is where all those shows came from. That I was listening to. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yep. Um, yeah. When did you start writing? Oh, Flatline, hello. Welcome to uh, yes, hello. Flat Lizzo. <laughs> My Lizzo. brother's team knowledge. Lizzo. What's Lizzo. up? Good to see you, brother. Yeah, good to see you, too. Thank you. I, I thank you all the time, but thank you for all your support with Hip Hop Gods, man. You you oh, really, man. like, put the word out there, so I appreciate you. Thank you. Hey, this li- likewise, you, you put the word out for artists like myself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, independent, don't really have the love from the major stations, but stations like Hip Hop Guys Radio show true love, and 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 it's a part of a real part of the culture. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not no culture vultures. It's real motherfuckers who really trying to build the culture up. You know what I'm saying? I, and I respect that. And I'm glad that I'm glad to, yeah. I'm glad to know you. You know what I'm saying? Because like, you you've been a great part of this culture, man. For real. Thank you, brother. I appreciate yeah. you. Um, so my next question was, when did you start writing rhymes? I started off as a DJ, so I didn't really start writing rhymes until um, maybe high school. Because around then, uh, the MC, first it was always about the DJ. It was always about the DJ. Yeah. The MC was just like a second thought. You know what I'm saying? He was just there to get to keep the crowd going and let them know who the DJ was. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. It started, but eventually as records started coming out, the MC became a more prominent part of the um, live st- the live show. And um, all the girls wanted to be with the MC at some point. So, you know, of course, <laughs> as a young boy, you want to be where you be, you want to be where the girls are. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Or people that, you know, you went to. You know what I'm saying? So I started writing rhymes. I wasn't really serious about it because I still was really, my heart was still with the DJ and digging in crates and music and stuff like that. But when I got to Howard University, um, my freshman year, I met some other cats from Philly. This one cat in particular, his name was DJ Trouble Trev. He went to Central High School. This dude was nasty. I mean, he was <laughs> fast as a mu- yo back to back to back. I was like, yo, I was like, okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna let you be the DJ. I'll be the MC. And we used to do, and then from there, he and I got together, and we had a crew called the Osage Crew. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, at the time, that was around the time um, Osage thing was going down. '85. That was my fresh year that was around the time now that stuff went down over there and um when they burnt the their whole neighborhood down trying to Move. kill those innocent those people man 
yeah, to move people there. Yeah, that was fucked up. Yep. And it was on Osage My, Avenue. So we caught our crew. Yeah. It was a whole bunch of all Philly cats. We called ourselves Osage Crew, but Osage stood, stood for out for sex and getting exotic or outlasting suckers <laughs> and getting, you know, we always had different different names for it, you know what I'm saying? But we was the Osage crew, you know what I'm saying? And no, no, and enough respect to the original Osage Nation, the, the natives, you know what I'm yeah. saying? That was that we got yep. the name from, basically. But um, yeah, so I got down with him, and that's when I started really getting serious about my rhyming. When um, I, I saw he, how good of a DJ he was, I had to show deference, and I, I was like, "Yo!" And it was me, he was the DJ, and me and some other cats from Philly would or started being his uh, his MCs, and we did mad parties throughout DC, mad basement parties and dorms. Then we started doing parties at this place called the WUST Radio Music Hall, which to this day now is called the 930 Club. But back then it was called the WUST Radio Music Hall. And we used to yeah. give, uh, we used to put on um, back to school parties, like homecoming. Like me and my crew was the first ones to bring. We brought Salt and Pepper down and did a show at the um, WUST uh, Radio Music Hall for one of our homecomings. We brought Just Ice down for a show. And wow. um, uh, yeah, we had, yeah, we had that. We had to connect with uh, Herbie Lovebug, you know what I'm saying, through party and you know, party. We met him somewhere at one of the parties. We got cool with him. He was like, we worked out a deal with him, and because I mean, the parties was doing real well for us. I mean, it got to the point where I I, I got on academic probation, you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't <laughs> going to class no more. I was just like, I was just putting parties together and rhyming, and, you know what I'm saying? We started trying, and then one summer I stayed behind. I didn't go back to Philly. I stayed in D.C. Me, my man Trouble Trev, and one of the um, other MCs. We stayed behind. We got jobs as security guards at the National Museum of Art, and we saved up our money. And we went to the studio and recorded our, our, our first record and pressed it up on vinyl. Uh, wow. And we started our record, our record called our record label was called Black Dynasty Records. <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, it was hilarious. I, I, I think the song was called Here Comes Trouble. Because we was a, it was a dedication song, like like you know how like Run DMC did the songs are always did songs about Jam Master J. So we did a song about our DJ. It was called Here Comes Trouble, yep. and I, I can't remember what the other song was, but I still actually have the wax sitting in my crates back at home. Wow, wow, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy, man. We, <laughs> but that's the passion and the love. We we didn't make no money off of it. But it was just the love and the passion we had for for that. You know, what I'm yeah. it was the coach who gave us a chance to express ourselves and to be ourselves. Oh no! <laughs> no! <laughs> Damn it all! Damn it. So, Flatline, how are you doing? <laughs> Man, I mean, I'm happy to be here finally. Technical uh, issues. Oh, that's the order of the evening, I guess. Yeah. So. Damn Denver uh, Wi-Fi. <laughs> yep. Damn. Yep. CM would know. He's out there, right? So. And I'm yeah. muted, so but either that or he got a phone call. Well, it could be that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're calling him going, dude, where are you? Yeah. We're on <laughs> yeah. in got it. 40 gotta, minutes. Gotta get on. Gotta hit the stage. Hit the stage. Okay. We, Here we go. We having some we having some major technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> Something in the air, bro. Something in the air, man. Uh, so. I don't I don't know if it's on my end or if all of us is having technical difficulties, but I'm it's, it's not it's not going well for me over here. No. That's all. That's all right. We'll we'll get it. We'll get yeah, it done. Right. Yep. So, um, yeah. So okay. So you were working security. You yeah, said. yeah. The National Museum of Art. We saved up our money. We pressed up our first did record. record. Yeah, yeah, we did that. We started doing shows and stuff like that. And from there mm -hmm. is when we started doing those big shows at WST and bringing down Salt and Pepper because it was our intent to bring them down and be the opening act. You know what I'm saying? That was that was right. the intent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't spending right. all this money to bring them down and not open them enough for the <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, that was, but those shows were real fun. It was, it was, it put us on the map on the Howard University music scene. We was, I mean, we were going to school. This was the beginning days. Uh, Diddy was there. He was, he was like a year behind me. And, um, all those cats, the uh, Mad Rapper, uh, and Derek Angeletti, mm. all those cats, they all went to school with me back in those days, man. Wow. Wow. And that's a, yeah, that's funny. where you that's where you met Ladybug Mecca? Yeah, not at Howard University, but while I was in DC though. Uh, after okay, after I stopped going to school, um eventually I just dropped out. Um I just met her on the hip hop scene, just um 
she was in a dance crew and we they, they'd have a lot of little underground rap shows and uh break dance contests and stuff like that at these little places in dc and i met her at one couple of them me and my homeboys and we just started hanging out with them and me and her got real cool and um eventually started dating for a hot second and then um a little bit later i met ishmael you know just being on the uh on the scene college parties and stuff like that and yeah. um come to find out that his grandmother lived on chew avenue right around the corner from my grandmother who lived on 19th and champlos and um wow. so we it was like damn wow we and we started hanging out together and he was like yo he didn't, one day we were sitting around his grandmother's house digging through records and shit, and he started telling me about this idea he had for this group called diggable planets he had started working on these ideas and blah 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 but he wanted some people to help uh flesh it flesh out the idea he didn't want to do it by itself he wanted to make it like a crew thing and at the time i was in a group called the dread poet society and um yeah i was, I was gonna ask about that yeah <laughs> yeah i was in this group called the dps dread poet society of me my man j truth and my man bun and um but you know it was just hip-hop we, we wasn't like signed to no contracts or nothing like that it was just you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. just about having fun meeting people that like-minded individuals that like the same things you did and we just got together and did music and he asked me to do it i never thought that it would turn into what it is now you know what i'm saying but and i'm, yeah. so, I'm, I'm so glad i made the decision to hang out with this thing yeah but we just started he started telling me about this idea and um so he and i started um once he got me acclimated to the whole idea of the insect um theory and all that um i was like oh that's, that's dope you know what i'm saying it was different i yeah. what he was saying yeah. I, I it resonated with me but i would have never said it in the way he said it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it was i was like i but it was so they were so interrelated that it just it, i was like yeah I'm, I'm with that i'm with that all for one one for all you know what i'm saying in the insect community there is no ego you know what i'm saying it's just us you know what i'm saying everything we do is for the good of the, of the hive the community i was like right. yeah i'm down for that I'm down down for that right. so we started making music he had already had some songs already in the, in the loop I, I jumped on a couple of them joints and at the time Ladybug was I was dating her. She would come up visit in Philly to come visit up in Philly with me and um while she was there she, a couple of times Ishmael and, and I were working on this stuff and eventually after a couple of times we were all hanging together Ishmael asked her to be a part of it. He thought it'd be dope to have female energy in the in the group, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, he asked her to be in it. No, none of us even knew if she could rhyme or not. We would we were going to write her rhymes, but we didn't need to because she was already she was dope. You know what I'm saying? She, <laughs> tell you, but she just had a natural inclination for poetry and writing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And she never really was like us. Like me and Ish, Ish and I was like into it. Like we were trying to make demos, and we were like, yeah. She never was into that. She was just you know she was into hip hop, but she was just flowing, going with the flow, dancing and dance mm -hmm. groups until she met us. And I was like, wow. When she first let us hear the first rhyme, I was like, yo, I was I was I was thoroughly <laughs> impressed. And Ishmael, and then he 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 started asking her to get down with certain songs and eventually got to the point where he took a demo. He was working um as an intern at this place called Sleeping Bag Records at the time. Yeah. And he would go back and uh, forth from Philly to New York and um, be an intern up there. And through that internship, he met a lot of ARs. And he realized, like, yo, I could t on one of these runs, I'm doing a run for the AR sleeping bag. I could slip my demo to one of these other ARs and another label. <laughs> and so he slipped one of the demos, a couple of labels, uh, not really many bit. They wasn't really feeling it. And then one day he went into this office and met this guy named um, Dennis. Um, and Dennis was at this fledgling label called Pendulum Records. And he liked it. Dennis was this white guy, yeah. looked like a hippie kind of dude. I, 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 but he loved it, and he was like into it, and he was mad cool. I mean, I, I rest in peace. He's not he's not with us anymore, but uh, oh, he was a cool dude. He was he opened the door for us and convinced Ruben Rodriguez, who was the owner of Pendulum Records, may he rest in peace too, um, mm -hmm. to sign us. And yeah. they signed us. And when they heard the demo, they loved uh, Lady. They loved the fact that Ladybug was a part of the group. So we had to go back and add her to all, all the songs. You know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so then, wow. you know, 
We got signed. They gave us a little bit of money. We went up and we stayed. Uh, we had slept on the floor of some friends of ours, uh, Monica and Terry, that actually turned out to be, um, they were signed to Uptown Records, um, Terry and Monica. They were like a duo, R&B duo. Yeah. And um, yeah, oh, you know about, yeah, they was dope. Yeah, they yeah. were really dope. So we slept on the floor. Wow. We slept in their floor in Jersey City. Wow. And we would take the uh, the train over to New York and go you know get everything done blah 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 and then we take that and they they hooked us up with um once we signed they hooked us up with these two producers that uh did a lot of the the native tongue sound uh shane faber and mike mangini and they were based yeah, out yeah. in um bergen new jersey so once we got mm -hmm. some a little bit of money we got a little apartments and we started catching the dollar van from brooklyn all the way over to uh, to where uh, Madison Square Garden is, and you would take another bus that would take you over to Jersey, and we do that every day, five days a week. We just we go over there, and we just record the album. We took it was the summer of ninety one, ninety two, summer of ninety two, I think it was, yeah. and um, we recorded yeah. the album, and then that fall we released the first single, and. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. There it goes. First there it goes. There it goes. That first single was, yeah, was yeah. and it wasn't even supposed to be. The, it wasn't even supposed to be the first single. It wasn't supposed to be the first single. The first single was supposed to be a song called "Brown Baby Funk," and mm -hmm. um, but uh, Duke, uh, Charles Duke, or what's his name? Something Duke. Um, yeah, I can't think of his the full name right now. But he wouldn't. He would not. Um, And um, a couple other ideas floated around. And then finally, the label was like, yo, we feel in this song called Rebirth is Slick. We feel in that, John. We was like, what? Uh, we never even thought about it. We was like, okay. okay. Uh, all right. Wow. We like it too. I mean, because to all of them, to us, all the songs of our baby. So we loved all of them. You know what I'm saying? And sure. We felt like they could all be singles. You know what I'm saying? Even though they might not have been, but we felt that way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We was we was cool with that, but we really wanted Brown Baby. Brown Baby Funk, and it never made the album, and we just scrapped the song. But it was a dope song. I'm, mm. I'm salty that we never put that song out. It was a really <laughs> dope song. It was a uh, we we lost you there for a second. What, did they? The reason it didn't come out was they you couldn't clear the sample. Is that what it was? Yeah, we couldn't clear the sample. So then we had to go back to the drawing board, and eventually wow. uh, the label oh. decided they wanted to go with Rebirth the Slick, and we was like, oh, right, oh, that's what's up. Yeah. That. Yeah. Well, good good thing they didn't clear the sample. He didn't clear the yeah. sample. No, for, I mean it could have been a, it could have been a whole different career trajectory right there. You know? Right. Yes. Right? It could have been. Wow. I just saw uh, Re Rebirth the Slick in a Porsche commercial. Like yeah, last yeah. week. And I was like, what is? Yo, <laughs> oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, we just uh, we just did a show in Chicago, and all the executives who um, helped us get that deal they from the Porsche they all came to the show. We we got a chance to meet them. They were mad cool. Wow. They they nice. were all they were all fans of the group from the early nineties. They grew right. up on it. so it's it's cool. It's funny because a lot of those cats from those days they grew up on the music and then they became these big executives and now they right, right. You know, they love the music. They they're taking that love and they're injecting it into their uh, what they do. And it's it's yeah. cool. It's yeah, cool. that's great. See, that's a part of what I'm saying. This whole resurgence is all those people, they're yeah. gonna bring yeah. this music back. And it's going to be in the forefront and all these younger kids are going to hear it and be like, well, what's that? I didn't hear that. And yeah. I'm telling you, it's all cyclical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so what was it like then to have this first single just like explode? I mean, because you guys were like, that's, that shit was huge, man. Surreal. I, I mean, it was very surreal, man. We had to learn. We had to learn on the job. I wasn't ready for it. It just it happened mad quick. Even yeah. though we've been, we've been working at it for years, you know what I'm saying, at the craft and trying to make it happen. But this level of success was something that we had never achieved and wasn't ready for. You know what I'm saying? It was a lot of pressure and uh, do this, do that. Like, oh, I got to do this interview. got to go, go here. Go. Like, oh, damn, yeah. man. I'm going to smoke, smoke, smoke a blunt and chill, play some Atari and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn. But you know what I'm saying? Then we had to get used to that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because we were just used to doing what we do. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. this was, it was a business, and we had to learn the business side of it. You know what I'm saying? And um, it took a while. We were young hardheads, but we we eventually 
got acclimated to the business side of it and did our thing man i mean got lucky yeah you know, had a lot yeah. to do with it you know then being in the right place the right time had a lot to do with it you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah. um were you i'm i'm guessing i'm imagining that you guys toured a, a lot at, when yeah. after when the album dropped yeah we did we did yeah there we go can, can you hear me everybody's going out it's on my screen oh yeah we're still yeah. here yeah can you hear me yeah you can, can you hear, hear me okay good. Yeah. yes yeah, yeah yeah we did a lot of tours back in those days that uh we had a you know we had that label connect the label had connections like crazy and we was they put us a part of a lot of different tours smoking grooves tours we, we did our own little club tours throughout the country and then they took us out to europe and we stayed out there for like a couple of months and just toured around and built up a fan base yeah wow um let's go so going into the second album seems like we losing everybody what's going on over there Oh no! Can we still got it? Everybody still there? We're still here. We're still here. Yeah, we're good. Yep. Can you hear us? Maybe you can't. Can you hear us? Oh, oh, snap. Can you hear us? Oh, there go. All right, there go. Flatline. Yes, sir. <laughs> we lost. We lost. C Doc though. And oh Jen no! I'm here. Oh, there you I'm go. There well, you go. Yeah, Jenny. Jenny bounced Jenny, out for a minute. Yeah, but, he had to dip. Yep. Jennifer, we're still oh, here. Jen yeah we're still here all right, um, good, good, good. so uh so you guys the, the big record comes out you're touring a lot what's the approach then going into the second album you know, yeah well <laughs> yeah there we go <laughs> oh, oh, the cassette. You, 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 you. i got the cassette there's a, there's a record record store here over the weekend that was selling the cassette for thirty bucks. Wow, thirty Man. bucks. Yep. Damn. Woo. Yeah. So how did how did you guys approach? How did you? Because this is this record is amazing to me. I mean, it's amazing. Just, yeah, it's just one of the <laughs> one of the great <laughs> hip hop records there. I mean, yeah. But anyway, how did you guys how did you guys approach recording the second the follow up album? The success of the first album emboldened us to feel like we wanted to do what we wanted to do gotcha. as artists. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and we felt like we wanted to speak more about the shit that we really see in the world. You know what I mean? I mean, reaching was, was, was def it's not like it was, we faked that shit. You know what I'm saying? Reaching right, right, was right. Our life. It, was, it was more, but it was more like our college life. You know what I'm saying? Our, mm. It was fun you know, uh, innocent to the world type shit. Blowout Cone was our, now we in the real world and this is how the real, this is how we see the real world, how the real world sees us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Blowout Cone, the success of it emboldened us because the label wanted us to do another coup like that. But because yeah. of the success of that album, they gave us leeway room and they and we just hit away and just started doing, but we were doing these dark songs on the album and they didn't know it. And then when we finally started presenting the album to them, they say, like, "All right, yeah, cool, cool. Uh, uh, where's our cool like that song?" <laughs> <We're just> like, <laughs> they was like, they needed another, you know, something to sell us. I guess you know what I mean. So right, like, yo, this is it, man. I, this is this is it. I don't know what to tell you. And, <laughs> um, and, and Ruben Rodriguez and those cats and Dennis, they they believed in us. Um, they took a chance with us on our first one, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. it did well. So they, they took a chance on this one. And the second one didn't do as um, commercially successful as the first one. But like you said, I think, but whenever we tour around the world, any, any place I go around the world, people come up to me and they always talk about the effect that Blowout Comb had on them. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like wow, I, I didn't think that. I would I, th I would have thought that Reaching would have been a song that, you know what I'm saying? Connected with them more, but it was blowout comb. People come yeah. to me, yo, this uh, this is like an unsung. I'm like, wow, that's that's what's up. Man. Yeah, appreciate yeah. that. Appreciate the love. It definitely didn't do as well as reaching. It did okay, but it didn't do as well as reaching. Reaching sold mad, mad records, and it just got it. Yeah. Otherwise, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, and it's it's nothing to take away from reaching because reaching is dope. Yeah. But it's you guys. 
you can tell that you elevated and really took yeah. shit to the next level of blowout comb because it's just like yeah it's a masterwork man yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. also also on the second album we uh utilized more live instrumentation mm -hmm. than we did on the first first album was mainly samples you know what i'm saying um the second album was samples too but we also now we had a budget and we hired some musicians and then we got this one cat that played um horns for us david david lee jones and he sat down and he he was a seasoned musician from berkeley music school like the entire actually the entire band they all were friends from berkeley music school but david lee jones took the time out with us and we sat down and he composed all those um interludes on uh, wow. on blowout comb he composed them then we hired a new york philharmonic orchestra some members of the orchestra to come in to the studio and um sat there and we recorded and it was yo i'm telling you I, it was an awesome experience an awesome experience you know what i'm saying damn it was awesome and um yeah that was really cool so i mean the second album it gave us a lot more freedom in that way you know what i'm saying to utilize live musicians get people like the new york, new york philharmonic to come out create our own interviews right. and, you know what i'm saying and try to create a vibe on it and i'm very proud i'm happy that ruben rodriguez um allowed us to do that because some labels wouldn't allow you to do that yeah for right. sure plus you got to do um which one which uh burrow check i with, knew you were gonna say that yeah <laughs> guru yeah oh man rest, yeah. Make, rest in peace man definitely that was yeah. one of the highlights when we were and they were asking us who we wanted to be on the album his name was had to be the first name and plus on top of that we kind of we lived in the same neighborhood in brooklyn we all kind of saw each other hung out smoked weed together watch kung fu flicks so we was like we gotta have him on. we gotta have him on. <laughs> yeah him and then through that connection we got real cool with jay rue yeah, and then we was like yo come on man and we were sitting there one night watching one of these. I forgot what it was, the a Fist of the White Lotus or some shit. And we were sitting smoking and laughing, talking, playing Atari. And I because I flew and Jay Rue were always we were together. They always had to outdo each other. They would sit there and try to show who could do the best kung fu flip. Who could <laughs> tell and us wild stories of who jumped out of a window. And I'd be like, where? Like, okay, well. And finally he was like, yo, man, let's do a song together. And he's like, Yeah, yeah, let's do a song. And then that's how that that's how that came together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we also had terry and monica that, who sponsored our first you know allowed us to sleep on their floor they they did some on the, um on four corners the song called four corners yeah mm -hmm. on that joint and um of course our homie suleiman the bronx ripper is on there and that, that's a friend of mine from back in the day and um a couple of the people on there you know what i'm saying um can't think of everybody at the moment but jazzy joyce <laughs> Y'all was cool. Yeah, of course. She has a Joyce. Of course. She has a Joyce. That's my girl. I hope she's not watching this because she will definitely call me up and curse me out over there. Well, she, remember she, she tried to cuss me out. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> you know, if she got no cut card, she will let you know. Oh, bro. Remember, we, I had to talk, holler at you. I was like, yo, what, what's, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, Jazzy Joyce. Yep. Yep. She, man, she blessed us on that ninth one to join. Was, yeah. Yeah. So, so then, what happened? <laughs> the second album comes out. Yeah, you know we human beings, man. We got issues like every other human being has. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Money breeds uh, little inner circles. You know what I'm saying? That get in your ear and be like, you, you don't need those guys. What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And like you know that type of shit, you know what I'm saying? I mean, none of my crew said that. If somebody in my crew said that, they would have to get the fuck out of my house. I ain't. Fucking <laughs> mm -hmm. But eventually, you know what I'm saying? Little shit happened, and we weren't as cool as we used to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And because of that, it opened the door for things to happen that shouldn't happen. And then when the Pendulum Records started falling apart, they started um. Uh, uh they lost their distribution deal with emi and things were just not flowing the way it was um it just got to a point where we just we were young rebellious it was like yeah whatever fuck you too fuck, uh, and, <laughs> and we didn't think we didn't think things through 
Right. Like, mm. You know what I'm saying? We didn't think things through. And so we just kind of like, we called it quits. We decided to call it quits. And um, I didn't want it to be quits, but it was just out of my hands at that point. You know what I'm saying? And, right. um, and we just broke away. And everybody went and did their own, their own thing. At the time I broke down and I went back to Philly and um, started regrouping, trying to figure out what I was going to do. You know what I'm saying? And then um, got a call from a musician friend of mine um, down in Washington, D.C., who had a studio. And um, he asked, so, yo, why don't you come down, man? I got the studio, all these artists coming through, and uh, I need somebody to help me, you know, get this thing done. So I went down there, do some engineering with him, help them get some, people, some people's demos done. And then I started doing them when people started – you know, they, after about like two hours or something sitting in the studio, they'd be like, you look familiar. Who are you? <laughs> and then they were, then someone, someone would be like, are you the... And sometimes they would call me Trey from uh, Far Side. Someone thought I was <laughs> Lord Jamal from Brand Nubian. And some, some of them thought, but some of them knew who I was, like really knew who I was. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they was like, uh, uh. And then I, eventually some of those artists, I, I started doing artist development and I started helping them develop mm -hmm. their... Je ne sais quoi, you know what I'm saying? It's like, right. get their shit together, you know what I'm saying? Helping them, just giving them little tips and helping them in their studio, making a few calls, getting them some gigs here and there in the DC DMV area, little stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And um, and then I started developing. Then the guy, the, uh, the studio owner, started letting me stay in the studio. Um, and I would just stay there after the sessions. I would just stay there all night, and just working on my own shit, you know what I'm saying? And it is. Mm. Yeah. And eventually I started developing this thing, this idea I had called the Cosmic Funk Orchestra. And um, I turned it, yep. at the time I didn't have an orchestra, you know what I'm saying? So to me, every instrument and samples that I was doing, I was the orchestra, just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> my voice was one of the instruments, these different samples, the way I put them together was the was my orchestra, you know what I'm saying? And then um, I moved back to Philly again. And that's when I met uh, these these uh, this guy named Brandon Rossi. He was this hippie dude. Italian hippie dude, all into the deadheads, you know, that kind of that kind of crowd. <laughs> and he was like, he knew who I was. And he was like, yo, man, I got this band, uh, this hippie jam band, but they know they can do hip hop too. It'd be dope if I you be the MC for them and y'all go around and do some shows. I, I can book y'all all these little hippie jam band shows and shit like with Toots and the Mai Tiles and all these different groups and shit <laughs> like that. And I was like, well, all right, cool. That sounds dope to me. And we just started, <laughs> and, then we, and then I just started rolling with them. We started rehearsing and we, they became my first cosmic funk orchestra, you know what I'm saying? And we toured all over the place. We did shows with Toots and the Mai Tiles and all these different jam bands and shit like that. Um it was mad fun. It was mad fun. And then eventually, a couple of years later, I got a phone call from Ladybug saying um, she had a studio up in New York. And over the years, I've been getting phone calls. And I'm sure they were too. Yo, yo, why don't y'all get back together? What's going on? Duh, 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 blah, 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 blah. And I just was, I just was like, man, I don't, I don't, I can't, I can only speak for myself. I can't speak for the rest of them. If it was just me, if it was just me, I was a solo artist, let's do it. But I can't, I can't do it by myself. And eventually when she called and told us that she was interested in talking, we was like, all right. And I talked, I talked to Ish and he was like, he was cool with it. We all went to, we all met in New York and she had the studio situation in Manhattan with her husband at the time. And, um, we started talking. Eventually, that talk turned into let's do this. Let's do this shit again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had some connects and um, booking booking um, hookups in in Europe. So I was like, "Yo, let's go out there and see what happens." You know what I'm saying? At least if we bomb, nobody will know. About it. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> you know said, let's do it out there. They said, "All right, cool, cool." So we went out there, and the shit was lit like. Oh my God, wow. every fucking yeah. show, lines was around the fucking corner. I was like, yo, I, <laughs> I could not fuck it. It was just, it blew my mind. And I yeah. we got there for like a month or so, just doing shows, these little clubs, just from the jazz cafe in London to these little to grimy spots in Brussels, Belgium and shit. We were just doing shows and shit, you know what I'm saying? And after it was over, we came back home and we were like, yo, let's keep this shit going. That shit was fun. It was like, yeah, yeah. And then we started making some calls, and um, we just started doing shows. We off the strength of just us. We didn't really have any booking agent. We didn't have a label, none of that. We were just we had a couple of people that we knew. We called them up, and they 
oh yeah, we're up. Do, 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 do. And we started doing shows and um, started blowing up. And then we had our uh, we had our little issues again. Group broke up. We'd be off for like maybe six months to a year. Then we we uh, get back together and make up again. That went on for a couple of years until about I'll say. 2016 or something like that and then from that point on we got back together again i mean we have our issues with human beings but but we've yeah. been able to maintain from 2016 mm-hmm. on you know what i'm saying doing shows on and off of course ishmael has his shabazz palaces so he has to take time off to do some promotion for that ladybug is doing her thing i've been doing some other things you know what i'm saying i'm been working on um for years that I've finally had a chance to put out. And I've been also doing little um, mixtapes and albums too of my CFO band. Thank you, Flatline. (laughs) (laughs) But it's a blessing that we've been able to keep this thing going for this long. And I mean, it's crazy because these shows, it's like, yo, you go to the shows and they'd be like 10 year olds, 70 year olds, like in all all ages in between, all fucking races. I'm like, yo, this is a fucking beautiful thing. I mean, because to me, I always knew it was always a cliche. Music was a bridge mm-hmm. for all of us, but it really, 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 it really the fuck is. Yeah. 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 There's a million people out there that I would have never, ever met if it was not for this thing called music. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And I've made a lot of very close friends, people that I've learned things from, gained things from, you know what I'm saying? And because of all of our passion and love for music so yeah man. yeah that's great that's so dope so what's what what else what what is what do you what do you got obviously you're touring right now what's after the tour any plans uh well, i'm working on my book my graphic novel series the epic of the heaven earth i'm selling those at the shows i'm pushing that i'm working on uh, my next episode I got like two or three other issues that I'm in development, making sure getting them um, ready so that I can release them sometime this year. I'm also working on an album, uh, an EP with these uh, producers from Canada, uh, these Italian, my Paisans, uh, the Reza brothers. They're really dope. Uh, one of them, uh, Lucas Reza, is the man, he's the music mastermind. He makes all the music. His brother Adrian sings and he raps. And wow. they call themselves 80 Empire. Um, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 80, 80 stuff. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's my brother. That's my brother. Wow. My, okay. Dope. We've been working on an EP together for a couple of years, and we're finally going to get it out this year. Man. And um, we're putting the finishing touches on it right now. I'm waiting for a uh, speech from Rest of Development, the latest verse for one of the joints we got. Word. And um, I got Nicole White, who's an actress, but she's an inc- Oh, my God. She's an actress on a show called BMF. She's been in a bunch of other movies too. She plays the mom of uh, Meech. Meech and mm. I don't know if you guys watch BMF show, but she's been in a bunch of other TV shows and movies. Nicole White, she's an incredible singer. She's on um, our first single, which is called Mother Earth. And wow. uh, it's kind of, you know, a song that, you know what I'm saying, that kind of wake people up to the situation we got on our planet Earth. You know, our mother, you know what yeah. I'm saying, that birthed yeah. all of us and shit. You know what I'm saying? We got to take care of this motherfucker. Right. And, we don't take care of yeah, this thing takes care of us so that's gonna mm-hmm. be the first goal. and we don't really have a release date yet we we trying to figure we trying to wait wait for some verse guest verses to come in final mixes and stuff like that but sometime later on this year we put that album out it's um i'm gonna i'm gonna call it a galactic love supreme mm. oh, and gosh. uh featuring the Reza, me and Reza brothers 80 empire and um, we've been talking about doing some more Digital Planets music, but you know, talk is cheap. I mean, I, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah, I know they're ready. They say they're ready, but we haven't actually made any music. We're talking about it. Yeah, beats have been thrown around, but we just actually haven't actually like really done it yet. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like right. the stages of it, but hopefully, we'll stick with it and we'll do it because I, I, I really want to. I think we should get yes. out. That trilogy, we gotta at least get a third album out. You know what I'm saying? Out of our that system, would be, yeah. regardless of who's gonna listen to it or not, it's really for us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I, we need to get that out of our system. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that happens. You know what I'm saying? But in the meantime, you got the Shabazz Palaces. That that shit is crunk. He got a new yeah. album right now. 
that joint is crunk. And uh, Lady Bug is working on music. You know, she got that new video with E40, which yeah. is dope. Really dope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's doing a lot of big things too. She's doing some stuff. So hopefully all that'll work out and everybody be successful with that. And um yeah. we'll get the big planet music out. But in the meantime, we definitely gonna be uh touring and um doing shows as long as people wanna see us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh and they're gonna be here on Friday. Oh shit. Snap. We're gonna be here in downtown LA. Yes, at the Belasco. Mm-hmm. Are you going, mm. Jennifer? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we will. Tonight we're, be in, tonight we're going to be in Denver at the Ogden Theater. And then mm. Thursday we're going to be in um, Solano Beach, San Diego. Mm. Friday in L.A. Wow. And then Saturday and Sunday we got two shows at the Fillmore in San Fran. Wow. wow. So Speaking of, <laughs> how, how is California treating you? How's California like? I love, I love California, man. I love it. It's the weather, the weed. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I love it. Out there. I mean, for the same weed that I'm smoking now in California, when I was in Philly, I was paying like twice, three times of that. It was getting me. It was getting me. Like, damn. Oh, man. But I guess because we're closer to the source, you know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's cheaper. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I, I love California. I, I, I love it a lot. Yeah, because right down the street, there's there's a, what's it called? Cush Alley. And they grow it all there. Yeah. And they sell yeah. it there. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong, Cali. I mean, the whole West Coast. Come on, Oregon, Washington State. I mean, come on, man. Humboldt County. I mean, this, this whole West Coast is just <laughs> chock full of that greenery. Crazy. <laughs> I'm a, I almost forgot to ask. Because I was listening to it earlier, I forgot about it's such a dope song. We talk about the points. Ah oh, man, you're soundtrack. killing me tonight. Flatline. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna go. ask about it. Yo, yeah. yeah. Yo, you got the props like a motherfucker. You've had all the songs. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. Yeah, that was That's a good yo, man. That was a great experience. I remember uh, Puffy. He and I went to school together. He had one of his assistants call me up and asked me if I wanted to be down with this joint. And I was like, hell yeah, yo. So uh, we went out to LA and they flew everybody out to LA. And then uh, we went to this little studio. <laughs> yo, it felt like we were driving forever out in this desert somewhere. <laughs> we was way out some studio, some big ass complex. And all of us was, I mean, everybody on the song, we was all there together at the same time. It was, it was wow. like a reunion. Some people I didn't, oh I, I knew a lot of those people I knew, but some of them I never met before. And I, like Coolio, wow. people like that. I had just met the man. He rest in peace. I met him, mad cool. You know what I'm saying? And um, we were just sitting there smoking, laughing, talking. They was telling us war stories. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and all this other stuff. And um, so we recorded. So each one of us were going there with Easy Mo B. He would call us in yeah. um, whenever we was ready with our verse. And we sat there and wrote our verse right there. And then he was like, call us in. You ready? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Go in there. It was like a factory and shit. I was, like, I was intimidated like a buff. I'm looking like, damn, red man. I'm like, damn, he's a big. Right. Like, oh shit, this shit right. is fun. This is real out like this motherfucker. Like, <laughs> and, I was, and I started drinking some water, like get my shake that shit off. You know what I'm saying? I was super high and shit. I said, All right, let me do this shit. He called me in. I did my verse. And then right after you did your verse, you went right into another room and you shot uh, your scene for the video. Oh, and I was wow. like, yo, this shit wow. crazy. I was wow. Like, yo, this is crazy. And then after that, we was there for a couple hours. Hours and then they would um when no. back to your hotel hotel that was it was mad fun though it was a great experience I'll never forget that nice wow yeah that's, that's one awesome. of my all time favorite posse cuts I just right. it's unbelievable yeah. every time like uh, not to alter mag don't run with that <laughs> every time I listen to it I mean it just blows my mind it, it, so anyway yeah yep yeah great shit it's a well. Monster. You guys have any other questions? Because he got just, to go. Yeah, he's got to work. Tonight. Yeah, he's gotta hit I just wanted, I just wanted to know if if Ninth Wonder gave y'all money for for giving him his name. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, nah, but he always gives us love. We were just with him. Um, we were just with him a couple of months ago at the uh, Blue Note Jazz Festival out in Napa Valley, and he came up to us during our sound check and was like, we were sitting there talking, laughing. He was like, "Yo." You know I got my name from y'all. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> about that and all that stuff. 
Because we actually we were trying to, we might be doing something with him too. Because he was, uh, he was talking about doing some shit with us. We we might do some, we might do something that that uh, actually comes about. But he definitely told us about that. He gave us that. He said, "Man, I heard that song." I was like, "Yo, that was that was the beginning of me." <laughs> I was like, "Yo, wow. I couldn't believe it because I, I have mad respect for him." And yeah. Wow, he was, like he's dope. So when he said that, I was yeah. like, "Damn, that's dope." Yeah, wow. yeah, that's great. Hell yeah. Well, thank see, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Well, thanks for you having know, me. No, you gotta go to work. So, you know, and anybody in Denver, you know, go check them out. They will play as right. Yeah, yeah. Jenny, hit me up. I'll see what I can do about some tickets. It's kind of tight. Everybody's trying to come to the show. I'll see what I, I can do for you though. If you if you got absolutely. some, all right, hit me up. All right. All right. Thank you, all sir. I right. will do that. All right, one love, family. Thank you, bro. Peace. Peace. Yeah. All right. Every time. <laughs> Every <laughs> time. <laughs> the minute he said it, he was like, oh, know, snap. Like, oh shit. <laughs> Technical difficulties can't myself. stop the show. So. No. Can't no. stop the bum rush. Can't stop the bum rush. I was gonna I, I was gonna ask about the the uh oh, yeah. Beyond the spectrum, but it's kind of a best of compilation sort of thing. But there's two two unreleased joints on there. Yeah, there? right. Dedicated and Three Slims Dynamite are the yeah. two unreleased joints. Right. Yep. yep. But yeah. Dope shit. Good shit. Yep. Yep. Yo, man, I can't. Like I, when the first record came out, I liked it. I was like, these guys are cool, you know. And then they played the hell out of, <laughs> you know, they played the hell out of um, what's a rebirth of slate. Yeah. And uh, but this blowout comb man just took me by surprise. It was just kind of like <clears throat> this shit is serious, Wait, you know. Hey. Yeah. Can I can I tell my diggable plant now he's off? Can I tell my diggable planet story? Oh, oh please, please, oh lord, wow! <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> so, so he was talking about WKDU, which is yeah. ninety one point seven, and it was Drexel University Radio. So, diggable planets came to play at Drexel University, and um, my girlfriend at the time uh, worked for the newspaper. So she she interviewed them. I know where the so <laughs> do you? So she interviewed them and she had like their promo picture and it was signed and everything. So um, you know, she just kept on talking about digable planets, digable planets, digable planets. And then uh one time, like I was in her dorm room, and you know, back in the day when you used to have your your phone bill and it'd be like, you know, you know, you could stretch it out like I Yo, forgot this story. Yeah, I'm looking at a phone bill and it was Brooklyn, Brooklyn. I'm like, this girl is from Pennsylvania. I'm like, who do you know in Brooklyn? I was like, oh. I'm like, yo. I'm like, yo, butterfly goddess. <laughs> so years ago, um, I was at Knowledge's house and I told him that story. And he, I, you know, it's just funny. <laughs> I was like, yo, Ish got my girl. Watch. <laughs> ah, I got your girl. <laughs> uh, I'll be right back. Okay. She'll be right back. Not, I was not, not the diggable I, planet story we had all hoped for, but you know. I was surprised he, he remembered that uh that thing about Jazzy Joyce too. That was another oh god. That was <laughs> Have you have you ever seen that video I did? It's um like if you know the song Knife Wonder, when Jazzy Joyce says her her part, yeah, that's actually that's actually a Sweet Tea song, right? You know, because you know Jazzy Joyce was the DJ for Sweet Tea, right. so I did the video and I brought in like kind of perfectly, very nicely Sweet Tea's verse, and so when I posted it. I tagged, um, you know, Jazzy Joyce. She's a DJ, so I thought she would get it. She was like, what is this? I'm not a part of Diggable Planets. This is wrong. Think this, this. So, you know, I had seen knowledge like, yo, man, can you talk to her? Like, why? Yo, she's, she's bugging out on me. He, he talked to her, and, you know, 
I guess she, you know, climbed down off the ledge, but <laughs> I was like, I, I got beef with Jazzy Joyce, MC Shan, everybody. He's just everybody. pissing everybody off. You can't what please them all. Bro. My favorites. I always have beef with my favorite people. Man, it's yeah, you know, you can't please everybody. You can't. Nope. You can, but <laughs> no, you can't. You to your put a, lot of more, a lot more work into it than that. Yeah. Yeah. Which, but yeah, it's, it gets silly sometimes. But. <laughs> That's great. Let's let's hope let's hope for more Dickable Planets music, huh? Some new music. yes. Well, and and while we're at it, let's wish them a, a fantastic evening. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. I'm sure Break a leg. Super, yep. I'm sure it's gonna be super dope. I've, I've I never got to, have, I've never gotten to see them live, so I just oh. might have to go to a concert on Friday. Yeah. I don't know. I'm thanking Jennifer. Oh, I'm thinking I'm you sure. should. When you get called out like that, how can you? Yep. Right. Yeah. How can you say no? I saw them a couple of years, like that post twenty sixteen thing he's talking about. They've been on that run since then, and it was uh, in Ardmore, PA, and Camp oh, yeah. Lowe opened up for him. Yeah. So That's it was I dope. Do. So dope. Yeah. Yeah. So to see, uh, you know, Suede and Chiba, and then them, it was like. And then you know when they come out do swing, I'm like, ah, oh, this is crazy. <laughs> crazy, yeah. That's yeah. A, that's a that's a good fit right there. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. Yep. That's a good fit. Flatline. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I. Uh, that, All righty then. That diggable tour that you're talking about, Ladybug Mecca, mailed me this direct and never made it and she's like well i'm gonna be in seattle are you gonna be at the show yes i'll be at the show i'll meet you after the show i'll give you the cd and that's when i got the cd direct from ladybug Mech. nice Fucking dope, bro. really just dope. <laughs> yep yep that's good yep um yeah hip-hop hip-hop gods let's talk about it let's talk about it huh um Mm. On ra on Rap Station, yeah, it's on Ooh. Rap Station in flotation. It's on uh, Mixcloud.com slash Hip Hop Dog Radio. Uh, some new music, a new single by Royal Flush, Netso, The One Chattio, Rob P, Jake Palumba, and M Dot, featuring uh, cuts by Mister Sinister and produced by C the Cuban. Whew. New Master Ace and Marco Polo. Uh, new joint by Pushing Buttons featuring Craig G. New E40, New Jism High Definition, and Jason Jump featuring Chino XL, and much, much more. Fantastic. Wow. Doing the Lord's work weekly. Doing the Lord's work. He sure is. He sure is. <laughs> Hip hop gods. Hip hop <laughs> gods. Yep. Indeed. Fantastic. Yep. Um, how is uh I have not yet checked out any 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 reviews on the new Master Ace? It's as good as I knew it would be. Yeah. I mean if you like the first one, you'll love this one. It's yeah. Ace is one of the, the greatest and he is. Yeah. yeah. So yep. can't go yeah. wrong. Yep. He is in fact a hip hop god. He is. <laughs> Very true, yep. Jennifer. Yeah. Very true. Facts. Yep. Um. All right. Well, there's our there's our show, gang. There's our show. Yeah. How about that. Came in and short and to came, the point. Right. Record time. Yeah. Incredible. We did good. So we can. Uh, you know, where are they after uh, Friday? Are they up in San Francisco? San already? Francisco. San Francisco. Yeah. I was feeling maybe a. Uh, um, uh, in the back seat, maybe, but oh. you know, yeah, probably not. <laughs> hey, you can always show nobody. Up. Wait, pause because nobody knows what that means, but us. they'll know next week because no, but just next the, week, yes, the way she said that is not feel a little in the back seat. <laughs> It only means yeah. to, to us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. But in the me- but before we get to that, we'll talk about our sponsors. And CDOC again is brought to you by Hackensack Brewing and the beer Auga that is dedicated to the awesome two. And I will tell everyone that if you're in the North Jersey area this Saturday, Hackensack Brewing will be hosting their fifth anniversary. So stop by Hackensack Brewing, get some wonderful beer, holler at my boy, Mike Jones. I'm sure the awesome two will be there. It'll be a great time. Hell yes. Auga. Auga. And uh, the show was also brought to you by the Spit Slam Record Label Group. The Spit Slam Record Label Group, a Chuck D situation. Catch us on your favorite streaming platform, on Bandcamp, or visit our official web store at spitslamrecords.com. All releases are available digitally or on CD, with select titles available on vinyl and cassette. The Spit Slam Record Label Group, throwback to the future sound. Yes, indeedy. And uh, you can catch Flatline, myself, and Mr. Chuck D every Friday for the Angie Don't Stop Radio Show on Rap Station, on Mixcloud. And uh, Flatline has the Hip Hop God segment. I play the Spit Slam Jam of the Week. We have new music coming out this week. Uh, yeah, we do. February 2nd, right? Is that Friday? Yes. February 2nd is Friday. Mm-hmm. Yes, the new album from S1W James Bomb. It's spoken mm. word over hip hop beats. Oh. Called the, the autobiography of James Bomb. So that's coming out Friday. That'll be the Spitzland Gym of the week. And uh, yes, and then you can. Well, okay, so wait a minute. Now it begs the question. I guess we should talk about this. Um, are you guys doing a mixtape this week? Yes. Okay, so you are doing a mixtape. So you can catch Ultra Mag, Jennifer O. Jenny, and DJ Soul Buck on Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on Channel Zero for the mixtape where they play music from our upcoming guests. But next week, we have a very special episode of It's Sea Doc again. And it is entitled In the Backseat with Jennifer O. Jenny. Yep. That's right. And her first guest on In the Backseat with J.O.J. is none other than the original gangster, Schoolie D. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Put your seatbelts on. Because <laughs> here we go. It's, it's a <laughs> hell of a ride. So, yes. So, next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, join us here for the inaugural episode of in the back seat with jennifer o. jenny and then we will be yeah we will be back uh the following week uh, with uh another episode of this show do uh, do we have a guest i don't remember yes now. we do okay yes, we do. should, should we let we them do. know right now who we got coming up sure okay who's coming up after uh the lovely Schooly D would be none other than Mr. Sinister. Ah. Getting busy with Mr. Sinister. Yes. So, next week. In the Not in the with, back seat. Yes, right. Uh, <laughs> next week in the back seat with JOJ, and then we'll be back here with the regular show the week after that. So I want to thank everybody watching live, everybody watching on the replay. My spectacular co-host, Jennifer O. Jenny, Ultra Meg 7 and Flatline. Thank you, guys. And we will see everybody. We'll see everybody. Uh, eh, just come around next week. For, uh, Whatever. Just show yeah, up next week. Just show up. We'll see you again. Right here, Ron. It's C-Doc again. Hey, Flatline. It's Little Wayne. 